talk. Great Expectations or Not is my title. So, is there anybody in this room excited for Christmas? Ooh, well, you know, it is a week away. Anybody in the room excited for Christmas? Hey, that's better. That's more like it. Come on, folks. So, a little bit of a story about me. Up to the last Christmas that I was at home, before I got married, I was the one who got everyone up on a Christmas morning. In fact, I set my alarm clock that last Christmas to make sure I didn't sleep in so that I could just continue what I had started from being a little girl, of waking the whole house up when I discovered my stocking at the foot of the bed. My dad, who's here tonight, lived for the day when I had my own children who could then inflict on me such an experience. They never did. How's that? I think Philip and I made such a good job of tiring our children out in the lead up to Christmas that they never woke up early. In fact, one year we were awake because I was getting excited. I knew, I knew that Father Christmas had been and there were lots of nice things for my children to open. We lay in bed at eight o'clock, wide awake, excited, not a peep from three children. Can you believe that? Not one of them woke up. So we lay there and we thought, this is no good. So Philip went, I know. So he donned his dressing gown, went onto the landing. Now, anybody who knows my husband's vocal premise will realize that this was quite an experience for our children to have on the first time. He stood on the landing and at the top of his voice gave his own very unique rendition of O Come All Ye Faithful to which three somewhat bewildered children stumbled out of their rooms and Christmas really did start. That is only just a little story to get you warmed up. Just to let you know that Christmas is a time of excitement. It is a time of great expectation and whether you want to or not, we all get pulled into the belief that we can have the perfect Christmas. We think we should all have the snow on the ground, the family gathered around the tree with little angelic faces looking up in adoration to their parents. And everybody sat around a big family table with their Christmas hats on, all looking really happy and enjoying food. Isn't that the Christmas we all want? Come on, audience participation. Is that the Christmas we all want? Exactly. That's what we think we, we deserve, isn't it? Because we see the TV, we watch the films, we watch the adverts, we get the Christmas cards through the post, and they all have this beautiful picture of what Christmas should be like. That is just not right, unfortunately. As much as we would love to be able to say we have got great expectation that this Christmas is going to be just perfect, the reality is that it probably won't be. This year, like every other year, people's expectation of Christmas will be impacted with sorrow, loneliness, heartache, disappointments, sickness, broken relationships, financial burdens and worries, and I could go on and on and on, and I am sure you could all add to that list. The hype, the TV adverts, the Christmas movies, they all depict a Christmas that is very, very far from what our personal experience and realities may be. I heard a story recently of a man who was well respected in his community, real valued member of his community. He was the man that whatever was going on, he was there right at the forefront of it. He could be relied on to always be there to add his, his views and his opinions and his support. But this particular Christmas, he was Mr. Bar Humbug himself. A bit like Philip in the lead up to December. <laughs> he likes to sit in a corner and be Bar Humbug as well. This man, who was usually so positive in his approach to life, was withdrawn, sullen, and seemed to be a completely different person to his usual self. Yes, he attended all the events, but he sat on his own in a corner looking sad and miserable. His friend, somewhat puzzled by this rather dramatic change in demeanour, said to him, what on earth is going on with you this Christmas? 
Where's that usual spirit of getting involved and enjoying things? Where's it gone? And so he began to tell the story of when he was a little boy. And that particular Christmas, the only thing he wanted was an engine for his train set. Ever felt like that? There's just one thing you want. On Christmas morning, he crept downstairs. Boys and girls, I hope there's no creeping going on downstairs early on Christmas morning. He crept downstairs, and sure enough, under the tree was a box that looked about the right size, wrapped in lovely coloured paper with his name on it. He crept back upstairs so that nobody knew he'd been up and waited for the time when he could unwrap what he hoped, what he had great expectation for was going to be this toy engine for his train set. He opened the box and there was no toy engine. There was a pair of socks. Oh, yes, yes, yeah, yeah. It was such a dramatic impact on this man as a boy that it spoiled Christmas for the rest of his life. And every year when Christmas came down, he went back to being that little boy who experienced devastating disappointment because Christmas didn't deliver what he expected it to. Now, the story has a happy ending. The friend... On Christmas Eve, they all got together as they usually did. And this year, when they exchanged gifts, this man was urged to open his presents. And when he did so, inside was a toy engine for his train set. It wasn't the toy engine that he needed anymore, but it reminded him that there is always hope. That even though sometimes we may experience disappointments, there is always hope. And that is the true message of what Christmas brings. Over 2,000 years ago, there were another group of people who had great expectations. We've sung a lot about them tonight. They were a nation waiting for something amazing to happen. The children of Israel had been promised a Messiah. So tonight we heard some of the prophecies. Over 300 prophecies had told them about the Messiah that was going to come, that was going to save them, that was going to rescue them. For hundreds of years, they'd read these these prophecies and they held on to the promise that one day they were going to have a savior. The trouble was they were looking in the wrong places. You see, they were looking for a king who would be born in a royal palace. They were looking for a warrior who would fight their battles and destroy their enemies. They were looking in one direction, even though they had been told in scripture as what we know as the old testament exactly what was going to happen 700 before 700 years before that first christmas the prophet micah said these words but you bethlehem though you are small among the clans of judah out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over israel whose origins are from of old from ancient times therefore Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labor bears a son and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. And in Isaiah, we read, therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and he will call him Emmanuel. So they had it written down for them. They knew where Jesus, where their savior, their Messiah was going to be born. He was going to be born in Bethlehem. Now, Bethlehem's probably a little bit bit like Castleford, the place time forgot, the place that nobody's really interested in, the place that doesn't factor very high on anybody's radar. But it was to that place that the saviour of the world was going to be born. We also told that how he would be born, that he would be born to a young virgin girl. But their great expectation was that the Messiah would be of a royal line. He was just not the one born in a palace. He was of the line of David, from a, who was, could trace her, her lineage right the way back. They expected him to be a mighty warrior, but he came as a baby. And yet within him was all the power and authority to destroy the greatest enemy ever, the price of sin that had separated us from God. As the people carried out their normal day-to-day lives quietly in a stable, the saviour of the world was born. 
There was no royal proclamation or fanfare played by royal guards informing the great and mighty of the arrival of this baby. But a heavenly host proclaimed his arrival to a group of humble, humble shepherds. You know, so often in life we feel we're not worthy, that we're unnoticed. But Jesus, the saviour who came as a baby, noticed a group of humble shepherds and made sure that they were the first to hear that he had arrived. So whatever our station in life, he comes to each of us and says, I've arrived. The heavens declared his arrival in the stars, leading wise men to find Jesus. And so today, irrespective of who you are, where you've come from, what your background is, it doesn't matter to Jesus. He came for every one of us. He came to the shepherds. He came to the intellectuals, those whose big brains get in the way of a lot of their thinking. But he came to every one of them so that they could meet him. In the New Testament, we read of a man who too was looking for the arrival of the Messiah. But unlike the majority of, the, of his people, he wasn't looking to an earthly kingdom. He was looking to God himself to reveal to him his son. It's one of my favorite stories of the Christmas, of the, of the scriptures around Christmas. It's found in Luke chapter 2. And in the message translation, this is how it puts it. In Jerusalem at the time, there was a man named Simeon, a good man, a man who lived in prayerful expectancy of help for Israel. And the Holy Spirit was on him. The Holy Spirit had shown him that he would see the Messiah before he died. Led by the Spirit, he entered the temple. As the parents of the child Jesus brought him in to carry out the rituals of the law, Simeon took him in his arms and blessed God. God, you can now release your servant. Release me in peace as you promised. With my own eyes, I've seen your salvation. It is now out in the open for everyone to see a God-revealing light to the non-Jewish nations and of, gl and of glory for your people, Israel. It's a wonderful story. A wonderful story of a man recognizing Jesus. And there's lots of people that are in this room today that have recognized Jesus. We don't just see a baby lying in a manger, but we see the fulfillment of God's promises and God's plans and purposes for his creation. God sent Jesus. Yes, he sent him as a baby that became a man who grew and experienced life like you and I. And that is the very special thing about, Chris, about Jesus, that there is nothing that we experience in life. That list that I started about with disappointments, heartache, worry, fear, Jesus experienced it all. And he knows. And because he knows, we can come to him knowing that he cares for us. You know, whatever our past experience of Christmas may have been, Whatever our feelings and thoughts about the season this year, we can all have great expectations. Not in a perfect picture of Christmas portrayed in films and adverts, but an expectation in the real gift of Christmas, a saviour who is Christ the Lord. The gift of a toy engine changed one man's view of Christmas, but how much more can Jesus the perfect gift bring to each one of us. He doesn't come wrapped in fancy paper, but wrapped in love. He didn't come just to bring a temporary smile. He comes to give life, joy, peace, and hope. He isn't the gift that as time goes by, we grow out of. No, he is the gift that's future-proofed. A gift that takes us from, in the words of Buzz Lightyear, from here to eternity. <laughs> He's a gift that enriches our life as we grow in our relationship him, with him. Maybe you have lost hope that things could be better. Maybe you are a bit like the children of Israel. You're desperate for something to happen. You're desperate for someone to save you, to someone to rescue you. But you're not prepared for him to come the way he wants to come. You know, the children of Israel miss the greatest gift ever because they were looking in all the wrong places. This Christmas, don't be like them. 
this Christmas, look to the one who came with the sole purpose of giving us life. A life that can be full of great expectation. A life that changes our perspective from seeing everything as hard and disappointing, that sees everything through a filter of it not being quite as good as it looks on the tin. He comes to give us a new perspective of life that's lived with him as the center of it. This is not just a baby. This is Jesus, the savior of the world, who came, who chose to leave the splendor of heaven, to be born to a young girl who was a nobody in a town that was on nobody's radar. He chose to do that. He chose to grow and to live a life that was one that we could relate to, a life that knew what it was to be despised. We read that scripture in Isaiah 53. He was despised and rejected by men. Even the, uh, the people of his, of his own town rejected him. But he came because he had a reason. And that reason was you and I. He came because he loves us. He came and he willingly, not only came to be born as a baby, but he came willingly to give his life so that you and I could have great expectations for a life going forward. So this Christmas, our prayer is that we will all know the one who fulfills our great expectation, who brings, a, brings light to our darkness, joy in our sorrow, peace in our torment and anxiety, and a hope for a future that is enriched by his love every day. God bless you. Have a wonderful, Jesus-focused Christmas that will, I promise you, never, ever fail to give, 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 fulfill your great expectations. Amen. <laughs>